You are listening to the New Book of Daniel podcast. Hello and welcome to the New Book of Daniel podcast. My name is Daniel Bobinski. I'll be your host on this adventure. Today we have a special guest with us, Ms. Anna Timmer from the state of Michigan. She's a mom, she's a business owner, and she is also the lady you probably remember from the Justin Amash Town Hall where she kind of gave him an earful. Yesterday I did a nice interview with her and I just was listening to it and I'm thinking there's a nice little snippet here that people really need to hear. And it has to do with the uh, investigation that she did in comparing Michigan votes with Illinois votes, both Republican trends and Democrat trends from the past several elections. I'm not going to um, spoil the in- information. I'm going to let you listen to Anna. It's just a few minutes while she explains it, but I think it's eye-opening, totally eye-opening. And by the way, while you're listening, uh, after I recorded this yesterday with Anna, uh, we learned that uh, Ms. Tracy Beans, the senior editor of Uncovered DC, for whom I write, uh, she lost her house in a fire. Everything has been destroyed. And there's a GoFundMe set up for Tracy. I will put a link to that GoFundMe down below in the show notes, and I would encourage you to go help her out as she tries to rebuild from scratch. Um, That is never fun to do, so I would ask that you would help her out that way. Again, look for that in the show notes. Uh, For now, let's go right to Anna Timmer as she explains the research that she did comparing Michigan to Illinois votes. Tell us what's been going on with your studies. You said you told me that you were doing a little research. What's going on with that? Well, so I I first uh, came up with the idea when I realized that uh, Michigan went for, of course, going back to 2016, Michigan went for Trump for the first, it went for the Republican for the first time in many, many years. Uh, I'm not sure, it might be 40 years, but don't quote me on that. But Michigan has been a blue state for quite a while. and then Trump actually won the state by about 11,000 votes in Michigan in 2016. And that was the thinnest popular vote margin of any of the states that he won in 2016. So we knew we were in for a fight. We knew we were you know, a, a battleground state. We knew that it wasn't a guarantee that he was going to win. I felt comfortable that he was gonna win based on everything that I knew um, about who he was doing well with, um, he, you know, he's continues to do well with, with pro-union people and the pro-union people are a big demographic for him in Michigan, but I knew it would be a fight. However, he gained on his own performance by 400,000 votes in this election. So, um, the idea that he not only outperformed him, but Trump not only outperformed himself, but then Biden came up around and above that to me seemed pretty incredulous. Mm -hmm. And I also kind of thought, you know, well, which, which group did he gain in? Because here in Michigan, you know, the, the demo, the Democrats typically get, like I said, they get uh, the union voters and they get kind of the, um, you know, whatever the uppity white liberal vote, the hipster, you know, white liberal vote. And then they get, you know, a, a lion's share of the minority vote, which is, a lot of that's in Detroit, some of it's in the Flint area, some of it's in uh, you know, the Grand Rapids area, which is where I'm from. And none of those groups, except for you know, the kind of the hipster white liberal vote, were really you know, doing that well for Biden. He was losing minority votes to Trump. He was losing union votes to Trump. He's probably holding steady in the white liberal vote, but I didn't see him increasing anywhere with anyone uh, so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, where did this gain come from? How did Biden not only outperform Trump, but outperform Obama here in the state of Michigan? And Michigan uh, union votes and minority votes came out incredibly well for Obama in 2008 and 2012. So I decided to do a comparison by county um, with I wanted to compare it to another state. I wanted to compare a lot of these counties where Biden was inexplicably doing so well uh, with similar counties in another state that I didn't think would be, you know, targeted for fraud necessarily. And I came up with Illinois. Uh, I'm from Illinois originally. Uh, A lot of my extended family still lives in Illinois. And although the state is part of the blue wall and is one of the most reliable blue states, you know, in the country for Democrats, 
it's really only because of Chicago and the Chicago suburbs, which are so populous, the rest of the state uh, is, are red counties, uh, which of course, and now that's true for, for every state that the rural counties are typically red counties, but Illinois and Michigan are similar in that they're both in the Midwest and they both have a huge amount of red counties. Um, and I kind of thought, you know, those counties should look pretty similar to each other the last three elections. Mm -hmm. I'm going to compare and see what I, what I find. And what I found was really interesting. So in both states, and again, this is county, I, I kind of stayed away from the Detroit and the, the you know, the Chicago suburbs kind of stayed away from Cook County, that kind of thing. I was mostly just comparing the rural counties, but I didn't stick to only rural counties. Um, but that's kind of what I focused on. In both states, Trump uh, outperformed Romney in 2016 and then outperformed himself again in 2020. So in almost every county I looked at in both states, the trend line was here, here, here. Mm -hmm. Both states for the Republican vote. Then I looked at the Democrat vote in, again, not every county, but in the majority, and I, I'm going to say 80 to 85% of the counties I looked at, yeah. in Illinois, for the Democrats, it went Obama, dropped with Clinton, dropped again with Biden, or Biden outperformed Clinton, but stayed below Obama. So in 80, probably 80 to 85% of the counties in Illinois, Biden got less votes than Obama did in 2012. Mm -hmm. It's the exact opposite, exact opposite in Michigan. In Michigan, in 80 to 85% of the counties, Biden went above Obama's 2012 numbers. So that's pretty telling to me. There's not any reason why those counties in Illinois, the rural counties, compared to the rural counties in Michigan, would have identical uh, trend lines for the Republican votes and yet be totally opposite in the Democrat votes. Biden doing less well than Obama in 85% of the counties in Illinois and then doing better than Obama in 85% of the counties in Michigan. And again, I haven't looked at every county, um, but I've looked at about 50 to 60 counties in each state so far, and that trend is holding the farther I go. I'll bet, I'll bet. And probably the information that's not available to you is at what time those votes showed up. Right. I would wager that um, if you looked at the timeline of the, of the evening of the third, that probably, you know, Biden was hanging Would look off. identical. Suddenly just shot up. That's right. That's what we've been what we've been hearing about is this this stop the vote thing, stop, stop the right. count thing that happened at uh, you know two o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning, whenever it was. Uh, then all of a sudden, whammo, votes start showing up for Biden. You know what I what I've been trying to get people to look at. You know, uh, people who are just you know the more skeptical types. Um, just explain these statistics. Look at these statistics. Can anyone give me a good reason why Biden would be outperforming Obama in Michigan, but not in Illinois? Great. And you can't just you can't just use uh, you know the turnout explanation because again the Republican trends are identical in these two states, and then it's just the Democrat votes where things shift. And if it's just a high turnout election, well, the high turnout should be in both states. So um, just this statistic and, of course, so many others, we can't seem to get any answers from anybody. You know, give us an explanation. All They keep saying over and over again, there's no evidence of widespread fraud. Give us an answer for these statistical anomalies because they're numerous and the, the anomalies are absolutely widespread. Again, that was just a snippet of the full interview that I conducted with Anna Timmer. If you'd like to watch the whole interview, go down to the show notes below. There'll be a link to the full interview below. Also down below is the link to the GoFundMe for Tracy Beans, senior editor of UncoverDC.com, who lost her house yesterday in a fire. Ask you to help her out at the GoFundMe account. Uh, if you want to, while you're down there, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Click the little red subscribe button, then click the bell. You'll be notified every time we upload a new show. 
My name is Daniel Bobinski. This is the New Book of Daniel podcast. If you'd like to get a hold of me, you just send an email to newbookofdaniel at outlook.com. It's newbookofdaniel at outlook.com. You can also follow me on all the social media platforms like Parler and MeWe, and then those old ones like Twitter and Facebook. Uh, just look up New Book of Daniel. I'm on all social media platforms as at New Book of Daniel or simply New Book of Daniel. Um, of course, you want to follow my writings on the politics and the issues of the day. You can do that at UncoverDC.com and as well, uh, Red State. So with that, I wish you a good day. My name is Daniel Bobinski. I thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you on the next show. Until next time, be blessed. Thank you.